So you famously run barefoot. Oh, do you still run barefoot? I still run barefoot. That's so awesome. Much to my wife's chagrin. <laughs> do you want to make an evolutionary argument for why running barefoot is advantageous? Um, <laughs> what have you learned about um, human and robot movement in general from running barefoot? Human or robot and or. Well, you know, it happened the other way, right? So I was studying walking robots and uh, I was, there's a great conference called the Dynamic Walking Conference. Uh, where it brings together both the biomechanics community and the walking robots community. And so I had been going to this for years and hearing talks by people who study barefoot running and other, the mechanics of running. So I, I did eventually read Born to Run. Most people read Born to Run and then, First, then yeah. right? Um, the other thing I had going for me is actually that I, uh, I, wouldn't, I wasn't a runner before and I learned to run after I had learned about barefoot running, or I mean, started running longer distances. So I didn't have to unlearn. And I'm definitely, um, I'm a big fan of it for me, but I'm not gonna, I tend to not try to convince other people. There's people who run beautifully with shoes on and that's good. Um, but it, here's why it makes sense for me. Um, it's all about the long-term game, right? So I, th I think it's just too easy to run 10 miles, feel pretty good. And then you get home at night and you realize, uh, my knees hurt. I did something wrong, right? Um, if you take your shoes off, then is, if you hit hard with your foot at all, um, then it hurts. <laughs> you don't like run 10 miles uh, and, then, and then realize you've done something, some damage. You have immediate feedback mm -hmm. telling you that you've done something that's, that's maybe suboptimal. And you change your gait. I mean, it's even subconscious. If I right now, having run many miles barefoot, if I put a shoe on, my gait changes in a way that I think is not as good. Um, so so it, it makes me land softer. And I think my, my goals for running are to do it for as long as I can into old age, um, not to win any races. And so for me, this is a, a, you know, a way to protect myself. Yeah, I think, um, first of all, I've tried running barefoot many, many years ago. Uh, probably the other way, just 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 uh, reading Born to Run, but just to understand because I felt like I couldn't put in the miles that I wanted to, uh, and it feels like um, running for me, and I think for a lot of people, was one of those activities that we do often and we never really try to learn to do correctly. <laughs> like it's funny, there's so many activities we do every day, like brushing our teeth. Right, uh, I think a lot of us, at least me, probably have never deeply studied how to properly brush my teeth, right? Or wash as now with a pandemic or how to properly wash our hands. We do it every day, but we haven't really studied, like, am I doing this correctly? But running felt like one of those things that it was absurd not to study how to do correctly because it's the source of so much pain and suffering. Like I hate running, but I do it. <laughs> I do it because I hate it, but it I, I feel good afterwards. But I think it feels like you need to learn how to do it properly. So that's where barefoot running came in. And then I quickly realized that my gait was completely wrong. I was taking huge like steps and um, landing hard on the heel, all those elements. And so, yeah, from that, I actually learned to take really small steps. Look, I, I already forgot the number, but I feel like it was 180 a minute or something like that. And I, I remember I was uh, I actually just took songs that are 180 beats per minute and then like tried to run at that beat uh, just to teach myself. It took, it took a long time. And I feel like uh, after a while you, you learn to, to run, you adjust it properly without going all the way to barefoot. But I feel like barefoot is the legit way to do it. I, I mean, I think a lot of people would be really curious about it. Can you, if they're interested in trying, what would you, how would you recommend they start or try or explore? Slowly. <laughs> <laughs> That's the biggest thing people do is they are excellent runners and they're used to running long distances or running fast and they take their shoes off and they hurt themselves instantly trying to do something that they were used to doing. I, I think I lucked out in the sense that I, I couldn't run very far when I first started trying. 
And I run with minimal shoes too. I mean, I will, uh, you know, bring along a pair of actually like aqua socks or something like this. I can just slip on or uh, running sandals. I've tried all of them. What's the difference between a minimal shoe and nothing at all? What's like feeling wise, what does it feel like? There is a, I mean, I, I noticed my gait changing, right? So, um, I mean, your, your foot has as many muscles and sensors as your hand does, right? Sensors, ooh, okay. And uh, we do amazing things with our hands. And we stick our foot in a big solid shoe, right? So there's, I think, you know, when you're barefoot, you're, you're just giving yourself more proprioception. And that's why you're more aware of some of the gait flaws and stuff like this. Now, you have less protection too, so. Um, Rocks and stuff. I mean, that... yeah, so, so I think people are, who are afraid of barefoot running, they're worried about getting cuts or getting stepping on rocks. Um, first of all, even if that was a concern, I think those are all like uh, very short term. You know, if I get a scratch or something, it'll heal in a week. If I blow out my knees, I'm done running forever. So I will trade the short term for the long term anytime. But even then, you know, uh, and this again to my wife's chagrin, um, your feet get tough, right? And uh, uh, callous. Okay. Yeah, I can run over almost anything now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what? Uh, maybe can, can you talk about? Is there hint? Like, is there tips or tricks that you have? Uh, suggestions about like if I wanted to try it? You know, it, there there is a good book actually. Uh, there's probably more good books since I read them, but uh, Ken Bob, Barefoot Ken Bob Saxton. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> he's an interesting guy, but I think his book captures uh, the right way to describe running, barefoot running to somebody better than any other I've seen. So you run pretty good distances and you bike and is, is there, um, you know, if we talk about bucket list items, is there something crazy on your bucket list athletically that you hope to do one day? I mean, my commute is already a little crazy. Um, what are we talking about here? What what uh, what distance are we talking about? Well, I live about twelve miles from MIT, but you can find lots of different ways to get there. So, I mean, I've run there for long, many years. I biked there. Both um, ways. Yeah, but normally I would try to run in and then bike home bike in, run home. But you have run there and back before? Sure. Barefoot? Yeah, uh, yeah, or with minimal shoes or whatever that. 12, 12 times two? Yeah. Okay. It's, it became kind of a game of how can I get to work? I've rollerbladed, I've done all kinds of weird stuff. But um, my favorite one these days is I've been taking the Charles River to work. So um, I can put in a little rowboat not so far from my house, but the Charles River takes a long way to get to MIT. So. Um, I can spend a long time getting there. And it's, you know, it's not about, I don't know, it's just about, uh, I've had people ask me, how can you justify taking that time? Uh, but for me, it's just a magical time to think, to compress, decompress. Um, you know, especially I'll, I'll wake up, do a lot of work in the morning, and then I kind of have to just let that settle before I, I'm ready for all my meetings. And then on the way home, it's a great time to let it, sort of let that settle. So you you lead a like a a large group of people. I mean, you're. Is there days where you're like, oh shit, I got to get to work in an hour? <laughs> like, I I mean, uh, is is there is there a tension there where and like if we look at the grand scheme of things, just like you said, long term, that meeting probably doesn't matter. Like you can always say. I'll just, I'll run and let the meeting happen how it happens. Like what, uh, how do you, uh, that Zen, how do you, uh, what do you do with that tension between the real world saying urgently, you need to be there, this is important, everything is melting down, how we're gonna fix this robot, there's this uh, critical meeting, and then there's this the, the Zen beauty of just running, the simplicity of it, you alone with nature. What do you do with that? I would say I'm not a fast runner particularly. Probably my fastest splits ever was when I had to get to daycare on time because they were going to charge me, a, you know, some some dollar per minute that I was late. Uh, I, I've run some fast splits to daycare, uh, but that those times are past now. Um, I think work—you uh, can find a work-life balance in that way. I think you just have to. Um, 
I think I am better at work because I take time to think on the way in. So I plan my day around it. Um, and I, I, I rarely feel that those are really in at odds. So what the bucket list item, if we're talking 12 times two or approaching a marathon, uh, what uh, have you run an ultra marathon before? Do you do races? Is there what's uh, never to win? If, not to. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna like take a dinghy across the Atlantic or something if that's what you want. But uh, uh, but if someone does and wants to write a book, I would totally read it because I'm a sucker for that kind of thing. No, I, I do have some fun things that I will try. Yeah. You know, I like to when I travel, I almost always bike to Logan Airport and fold up a little folding bike on, and then take right. it with me and bike to wherever I'm going and I've, it's taken me, or I've ta I'll take a stand up paddle board these days on, on the airplane and then I'll try to paddle around where I'm going or whatever. And I've done some crazy things, but. Um, but not for the, you know, I've, I, I now talk, I don't know if you know who David Goggins is by any chance. Not well, but yeah. But I, I talk to him now every day. So he's the person who made me uh, do this stupid challenge. So he <laughs> he's insane. And he does things for the purpose in in the best kind of way. He does things like f for the explicit purpose of suffering. Like he picks the thing that like whatever he thinks he can do, he does more. Uh, so is that, do you have that thing in you or are you? Uh... I think it's become the opposite. <laughs> it's uh... <laughs> so you're like that dynamical system that the, the walker, the efficient. Uh... Yeah, it's uh, leave no pain. Right, uh, you should end feeling better than you started. Okay, but um, it's mostly I think, and COVID has tested this because I've lost my commute. I think I'm perfectly happy walking around uh, around town with my wife and uh, kids if they could get them to go. Uh, and it's more about just getting outside and getting away from the keyboard for some time, just to let things compress. 